very good morning hope everyone is doing great my name is suchita doshi and today i'll be taking you through the journey of amber but before i do that let me give you a quick introduction about myself i work as a senior engineer at linkedin and before linkedin i worked for many different companies but my very first amber experience comes from yahoo back in late 2013s after yahoo i worked for apple where i didn't do amber stuff but that was not for long the love for amber pulled me to linkedin and here i am working on a lot of cool amber stuff also when i'm not on my like working on my computer or i'm not doing any coding related stuff here are the things that i love i love playing guitar not a pro but i can still play a little bit i am a huge cricket fan for those who don't know what cricket is it's a sport which is very similar to baseball and i myself play cricket and it's very famous back in india of late i have this craze of building my own custom mechanical keyboards with new switches and custom keycaps etc if any of you have any cool ideas feel free to reach out to me and i love watching movies i mean who doesn't right okay enough said about me now we should focus on the main topic so today's agenda would be something like this i plan to cover the journey of amber js in terms of its versions like version 1.x 2.x and 3.x going forward i'll be talking about amber octane and its native concepts like some core concepts like native classes glimmer components templating and octane track properties modifiers and decorators after that i'll be showing you a consolidated comparison of the classic syntax versus octane syntax and at the end i will leave you guys with some documentation and references to migration guides and some information about amber octane blogs etc okay so let's start with the journey of amber but before that let's take a step back and think about uh, around in 2013 times or so back in that time we didn't have a lot of options in relation to javascript frameworks as we have today the most evident options during that time were backbone js angular js knockout js etc while these were great they still left the decisions of configuration on the developers it was during that time when one framework emerged which was built on the principle of the developers should not care about the configuration stuff they should only focus on app specific stuff which means the developers productivity would be increased because the framework would do the config related stuff the name of this framework was amber js amber has come a very long way ever since 2013 and let's see how it started with 1.x so since 1.x was the for very first version of amber it came with a lot of goodness to start off with is convention over configuration this was a whole new mental model shift for any developer who comes from a different javascript framework world especially like i will give you my specific example i came from backbone js background and when i started working on amber it was very different for me but as and when i started working on amber I started feeling the difference and I started appreciating it more and more because I started feeling more and more productive. So that was when I started falling in love with Amber. Also Amber provided inbox built-in routing capability. So that means you don't have to write your own routing layer or get it from outside or something like that. It was already ready for you, which was a huge thing. Also we had support for Amber data that took care of the state of the application etc. and 1.x was built on view driven architecture what i mean is here you can see the route controller view like that was the path that or that was the architecture that we followed at that time and for anybody who wants a refresher of how we used to write amber views a sneak peek is in here where computed properties were written somewhere like we annotated it with dot property and observers were written something like where we added a dot observes to the properties also we had the capability of two way bindings which was great because at that time it was really really uh, a dynamic thing for any framework to have this ability 
and we had the support for attribute bindings. Uh, this was really good because let's say if you had a backing JS class for a template, like a component with a template or a view with a template, and you wanted to associate the attributes value uh, dynamically. So with bind adder syntax, you can associate your components or views uh, property directly on the template. So that was pretty good. Okay, so this was all good. Amber 1.x was really uh, taking off and it was doing great. And uh, complex web applications were starting to love it already. But the community always believed that there's always room for improvement. So the lessons that they learned from 1.x and the new frameworks that were evolving during the time when 2.x was being planned out, they embraced all of these things together and added things in the roadmap of 2.x. So here are the few things that landed in uh, 2.x. Instead of view driven, now we are component driven. Uh, this was because the web community itself was going in that direction and Amber was hand in hand with that. So here you can see route controller component is a new way. And again, a sneak peek of how the syntax changed. The computed uh, property is now amber.computed and observer is now amber.observer. Also, we had the Glimmer rendering engine in 2.x, which was a very, very good thing because it gave a dramatic improvement in the re-rendering of the application. It was pretty good. And then we had better binding uh, attributes. Like you remember in the previous uh, slide, I showed you the bind adder syntax, like you can see here as well in 1.x. But this posed some uh, issues where it became an overhead and it was confusing and so on. With 2.x, it became more simplified where you can directly add a property from your JS class onto the template without adding the bind adder. So that was nice. Also, the template scoping was improved. Let me show you an example. Here we have 1.x and 2.x again, a comparison. And I want to specifically talk about the second uh, example in the 1.x section where we are iterating over the posts without any in. So here I am doing each post and whatever is inside of that iteration loses the outside context or it doesn't have access to the outside context. So you are stuck in that iteration itself. So as a workaround, the above example, like each post in post allowed you to do that where the post would act as the inner context and then you can easily access the outer context. But in 2.x, things were way more simplified and standardized where uh, every time you want to iterate over uh, a property, you use the as functionality, like each post as and then pipe and whatever the parameter is here, it is post. So again, the post would be the inner context and you can get the outer context as in the new wish. Also, while two-way bindings was great, it did impose some uh, issues when your app started becoming more and more complex and more and more bigger. By that, what I mean is, let's say, property A updates B, B updates C, C updates A again. So this kind of infinite cascading started becoming a problem. And that's why we started embracing the data down actions up approach. And Amber 2.x was not just about all of this. It was way more than that. Um, in 2.x itself, we had a roadmap towards things like HTML syntax for component invocation, routes to drive components. Like these are angle bracket invo invocations and routable con components if you might have heard already. That brings me to my next topic, which is Amber 3.x. This is very exciting. It has a lot of things. I'll mention a few of the things here, but there are many more things than this uh, in 3.x. To start off with, it's clean up, clean up, clean up. Why am I emphasizing on clean up so much? Because a lot of clean up has been done uh, with this version, uh, where a lot of private APIs, deprecations, every, everything has been cleaned up. In that way, the code, the framework becomes more manageable, maintainable, and more cleaner. Also, we have removed support for Internet Explorer 9, IE 10, Phantom JS, and also Bower. From now on, the other points, I will be explaining more in details in the 
coming slides so i'll quickly skim through these 3.x has the ability for supporting native classes glimmer components angle brackets invocation track properties modifiers and decorators and lots of documentation which is a huge thing when you are moving forward with a, such a huge change so that is a job well done by the folks so what did we learn we saw that a uh, framework emerged when uh, in 2013 and released 1.x and then it improved more in 2.x and then it improved even more in 3.x and then here we are with the first new edition and we're up tame so you must be thinking why is this a new edition and why is it not a new version so you can think of an uh, edition as something that uh, represents a shift in programming model due to new features and concepts added in the framework like for example here we have a bundle of new features a lot of documentation a lot of toolings like code mods etc everything bundled together so that's why it's a new edition so let's take a sneak peek of each or some of the key concepts of amber octane itself let's start with native classes so amber relies very heavily now on native class or native features of javascript when i say it relies on native features i mean there is very less framework specific code and because there is very less framework specific code the overhead on <clears throat> building the framework itself is very less that means increased performance and amber is known for its steep learning curve i mean i've seen many folks who have spoken to and where i've read uh, i read some blogs as well where people choose not to use amber because of its steep learning curve and i can imagine why but i think with octane that won't be an issue anymore because since now we have again i'm repeating less framework specific code so you don't have to learn a lot of things out of the box so it's it gives you a smooth learning curve experience also because again the same thing um, it's more native stuff it is more aligned with the javascript community and you can share code more easily and there is no more dot gets can you imagine like me myself personally i used to feel like why do we have this like this dot get foo this dot get bar i'm sure a lot of you must be sharing the same feeling like i am right now so there's no more gets you just directly do this dot foo this dot bar like you usually do to invoke a property in your javascript currently and of course it is clean and easier to read enough said let's see an example so here in this example you see on the top we have this classic amber object in syntax and at the bottom we have native syntax now if you see the main difference is how we are creating or defining the object on the top we are doing amber object dot extend but at the bottom with native class syntax no more amber objects you can just say class person that's it you're done also uh, in the classic syntax you can see the computer property full name is created by passing in the uh, properties first name and last name and we are invoking the first name and last name is this dot get first name this dot get last name whereas in native class we are just writing the native getters of javascript and then just adding a little splash of a uh, computed decorator on top of the native getter that's it you are done you don't have to do this dot gets anyone this dot first name this dot last name so that's pretty cool this is a little bit about native classes now let's move on to glimmer components in my personal opinion this is one of the biggest wins in amber's journey so far because amber's component library was pretty old and with this new component library it's a great refresher not only does glimmer components take all the goodness of native classes but it also makes it more simplified component library in amber let's talk about this following example again so here a uh, glimmer component is defined by importing glimmer component instead of amber component as you can see and instead of uh, exporting default component dot extend like we do usually in our classic syntax we just do a native class and then extends uh, the glimmer component also there are now fewer hooks and properties that is a great thing like previously we had 13 life cycle hooks and 29 properties 
Now, can you imagine a new person coming and joining, working on Amber, and you say, hey, if you want to be productive, if you want to start working and make an effect, you need to know 13 life cycle hooks and 29 properties. That would be immediately daunting and overwhelming for anyone who uh, comes across this. I think with this, with uh, Glimmer Components, no more fear because now we only have two life cycle hooks and three properties. Also, you must be already knowing that every time you create a component in the classic component world, a wrapper is always wrapped around your template. Like for example here, the number of guests is just a value. But when it renders on the DOM, there will be a div or in this case, the, there will be a label that will be wrapped around it. This might become confusing and it has actually. I've had many people come to me and ask me, hey, I'm just rendering this template. What is this uh, new div that is being wrapped around it? I'm not even adding it in my template. And then I had to explain them the reason why. But with Glimmer components, it's what you write is what you get or what you see. Here you can see very well in the bottom where I'm wrapping it around with the label tag itself. So I'm not doing anything special in my class. Rather, I'm just writing everything in my template itself. So that is amazing. Also, it's important for us to identify what things are local in our component and what things come from outside. With the classic components, there was no way to do it because as I can see here, this dot number of guests and this dot max guest. They both are this dot and this dot. There's no way for you to know which is a current one and which is, I mean, which is a local one and which is coming from the parent context. But if you see in the Glimmer component case, this dot args dot max guest. So I know now for a fact that max guest is coming from somewhere outside. So it's from a parent context. So that is a great way to identify what is the point of origin for any particular property. So this was a little bit about Glimmer components for you guys. Now let's talk about templating in Octane. Now there are a lot of good things that have come in, uh, in the world of templating for Octane. Let's start with angle bracket syntax. Now this angle bracket syntax is a dramatic simplification of API. Like uh, let's say for example in here, in this example, we are seeing in classic templating, we are invoking the component using the curlies, but in Octane, we are invoking the component using the normal HTML syntax, which is angle bracket. So now it's very easy for me to understand which thing is coming or which thing is a component, which thing is a helper, which thing is a property. Whereas before, it was very hard for me to understand right when I see it from the first go. Also, uh, with angle brackets, we have something called as named arguments. Named arguments are a way where in the previous slides we saw this dot args. It is similar to that, but in the templating side where it helps you understand where is the origin of your uh, property coming from. For example, in here on the top, everything has no context whatsoever. You don't know where the employee name is coming from. You don't know where the employee ID is coming from. But in the bottom, it's very clear. Like for example, the employee ID, when I'm prefixing it with the at the rate symbol, I know that it is coming from an outside context. So now I can understand that, okay, this is a passed in arc and not something local to my JavaScript class. Also, a good thing to keep in mind is on the left side, like, uh, like on the classic templating side, on the left side, we have name, emp ID and add employee. Now it's hard to understand whether this thing is uh, part of the HTML attribute or is it a part of your component but with Octane it's very easy because now everything that is pertinent to your component will be always prefixed with an at the red like we have right now in here. Also we have required this in the templates like we have at the red symbol for something coming from outside we should know what things reside locally in your backing class. And that's where this dot employee name becomes very handy. Before, there was no way for me to know, but now I do. So it's a great way to make things very specific and very concise and very clear. So this was a little bit about templating in the Octane world. Now let's move on to track properties, my personal favorite. The reason being the simplification that it brings on the table, but beneath it is very strong. Let me start by uh, going through the syntax real quick. Here you can see instead of 
computed property where I'm uh, importing on the top. I am importing a track property from uh, Glimmer tracking library. Then any local property that I want to listen to or that I want to depend on, I will mark it as track, like I will prefix it as, as track in the track syntax. And then the magic happens. On the top, in classic syntax, you can see there is a computed property that is depending on first name and last name. Whereas at the bottom, I am not doing anything. It is a simple, plain JavaScript getter. But the magic happens now where any property that is marked as tracked will make sure that any getter that uses that track property and if there is any chance where the track property changes, it will make sure that it recalculates the getter and sends it back to the uh, browser. So in a way, the functionality or the behavior would be similar to computed, but this is way better. Just imagine when you are writing a huge component class and you have several properties in your class and if you have to depend on few of the properties here and there for multiple computer properties there will be so many computer properties in your class and it will be not very clean but with this you can just mark those or prefix those with track and just write your regular getters that's all so very clean and concise as well also no more sets like in native classes, we had no more gets. Now we have no more sets. So no more this dot set foo set bar or for example in here, this dot set count equals this dot get count. No longer all this confusion. Just do what you regularly do in your JavaScript. This dot count equals this dot count plus one and you are good to go. So that's amazing. So these are the few things of track properties, um, how it works and how it behaves. Now let's move on to modifiers and decorators. So what is a modifier? You can think of modifier as functions or classes that are directly applied to the template. Like it's applied directly to the element itself. Like you can see in this example, on the button tag, I'm adding uh, the on modifier itself, which is just doing some usual event handling with this dot increment. Now you must be thinking, why do I need to do this? I can currently with my did insert element hook, I can associate my uh, event listener and I'm all good to go. But just think about it. You can do that easily with your top level element or your root level element for your component. But what about the child elements? You could still do it, but it will be a bit messy. Instead of that, modifiers allow you to target specific elements. So you can go in whichever elements you want to associate things with. You can just add the modifiers in there directly. And moreover, it also cleans up the code for you and it also, I mean, cleans up the state and re-registers if any parameters change. So that is a great thing and they are easy to reuse. So there are a lot of benefits of using modifiers or not using them. Now let's move on to decorators. What is a decorator? Now you can think of decorators as something that enhances the functionality of what it is prefixed on. For example, here, you can see the increment function and decrement function has action uh, decorator prefixed. Now, just the increment and decrement functions are doing the job of incrementing or decrementing the counter. But with action decorator, it's doing more than that. It understands that, oh, now this function is becoming an action handler rather than just being one function. So that's how it enhances the uh, functionality. So it's kind of an abstraction for the developer but it adds a lot of value. So this was a little bit about modifiers and decorators. Now let's move on to the meat part. Now we will do the comparison between the classic and the Octane syntax. Now here on the left, very, very left side, you see there's a custom off label. That's what we are talking about right now. It is invoked using the curlies, like you can see on the bottom with toggle label and I'm passing in few uh, arguments. And in the right, you can see the actual implementation of this component. All this is good. This is classic component. You can see a lot of things happening in the component class itself. When I move it to Octane, this is how it looks like. Now the template specific stuff is in template, the component specific stuff is in component, and um, you can see it is invoked using the angle bracket syntax. Let's go through it one by one. 
So right away you can see that the import is different. On the left, on the classic side, we have component, amber component, and on the right side, we have glimmer component. Next, we are no longer doing the classic component syntax. Like on the left, we see component.extend, but on the right, we see native class uh, syntax, and then we are extending from glimmer component. Then, no longer implicit wrappers. On the left, I am overriding the tag name with label, but on the right, if you see at the right bottom, the label element is being enclosed in the template itself. Also, any template specific stuff goes to template itself on the right in octane part, but that's not happening in the classic. We are still doing attribute bindings and class name bindings in the JavaScript class. Also, a few things to note on the left side in the classic syntax, we have a property called is awesome and uh, a label value computed property that depends on that and then we are invoking it using this dot get but on the right instead we are prefixing it with tract the is awesome and then we are just using a normal regular getter and no longer this dot get it is just this dot awesome next thing to check is uh, on the left we see that we are depending on a property called value but I don't know really where this value is coming from. But on the right, it's very evident that it's coming from this dot args dot value that means it's coming from parent context. So easy to understand. Also, um, on the left, we can see that we are handling the uh, click handler on the left by writing the click handler in the classic syntax. But on the right, we are using the on modifier to make sure we are hitting on the element itself, like registering it, and then handling it using the actions decorator. So this was a little sneak peek for you to give you guys the feel of how it was before, how it is now, how simplified and how um, good the separation of logic has happened now. And I hope it gives you a good understanding of what is coming forward. As promised, here are a few reference and guides where um, it would help you to migrate your current existing Amber app to Octane, like with these code mods. We have a lot of code mods in uh, this link that you can follow. Uh, the folks have done a lot of hard work and it is easily seen in there. Um, hopefully this will be a very smooth transition for you guys. Also, if you have any questions about migrations or migration order or something like that, Amber Atlas would be the right place for you to go because it will give you the right amount of information for you to uh, migrate very smoothly. And the rest are a few uh, random information for you to dig down more deep into Octane and its key concepts and deep understanding about each concept. So this was it guys. Um, thank you very much for patiently listening to my talk. And I hope all of you are as excited as I am for Octane. And I'll see you writing Octane right away. Thank you.